Did you know that consistent brand photography presentation across all platforms can increase your revenue by up to 23%? Welcome to another episode of Spark and Ignite Your Marketing, and I'm your host, Beverly Cornell. Today, we have the pleasure of chatting with Safina Mahmood, a dedicated and passionate photographer with for 15 years of experience in the industry. Safina is the founder of Safina's Photography, a company known for its diverse and inclusive approach to capturing life's special moments. Safina's background in education and her unique ability to connect with families, especially children with disabilities, sets her apart in the world of photography. Welcome, Safina. Hey, <laughs> thank you for having me on. I'm so excited to have you. You have personally shot my family several yeah. times, including my wedding. So you've been on our journey together. I'm so sad that you've moved away because it's hard now I to know. even coordinate that. And I moved away. You not only, I think, were like a photographer, you were genuinely invested in us, which I thought was really quite extraordinary. You knew my kid. You knew what he liked. You even brought him little gifts. You just take the extra mile and the extra step to really connect with your families. And it's beautiful. I look back at all the f f photos you've taken over the years and, and they're real milestones in our life. And I remember very clearly this happened and this happened and you capture a moment. I remember one of my favorite sessions, Zeke was maybe two or three. He's nine now for my listeners. And he's in the background and we're all laughing because that was typical Zeke. Like he just and he was like, hey, I'm like, I'm here. And you just captured this beautiful moment. And it's one of my absolute favorite photos. I know you as you went to Avondale. I went to Avondale. But I also know you because you've done our photography over the years. And I miss you. And I wish you could still do my photography. Maybe one day that will happen. I'll have enough money to fly you to North Carolina to take my photo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about how your unique opportunities along your path and how it sparked. You went from education to photography. Yeah. Talk about how that happened and what that transition was like. And was there an aha or a spark that kind of started it all for you? When I first started out, it was more of a hobby. And then I, I started when I was like in high school and took photography class. And then I would just, I would take pictures for family events or my friend's weddings. I was teaching and everything, but teachers always need a side hustle. So either I was either doing enrichment classes after school or I was tutoring or nannying and was a nanny for a while, pick up, drop off kids, that type of a thing. Had to figure out another way to make more income on top of just being a full-time educator. And then when I had an opportunity when people kept telling me, hey, Spina, you should look into doing the photography or as a professional on the side. And then I was like, okay, let's try it. So I had put my name out here and there for a little bit. I started doing friends and family events. From there, I saw a post at Oakley University when I was tutoring a student that they needed a student photographer, someone that was up and coming and called them and end up doing their wedding as my first wedding. And they've been happily married. And I think they have like six kids or something. <laughs> a lot of kids. I started off with weddings and then geared myself more into family sessions after I had my own kids. I was like, I, I can't just keep doing the weddings. It takes us a lot more time to edit and more time for me to do going through all the pictures and everything. And then starting more of the family sessions and smaller events. And I also do weddings here and there, but my specialty is working more with children's and family portraits. You do a yeah. good job. You found your niche for sure. <laughs> How did you go yeah. from education plus photography to just doing the photography thing? Well, once I had my own kids and I, I realized, okay, it's not worth me as an educator for me to put them in, into childcare because then you have to pay for someone for pickup and drop off yeah. after school. And teachers are still, they're... It's just not worth it. And I had my other son two years later and I had to be recertified because we moved to Jersey with my older son. I started to promote myself out in New Jersey. I was doing really well and it was more wedding than it was family sessions out there. I actually reached out to more of the Indian and South Asian community in New Jersey. And so I kept getting more feedback on uh, South Asian weddings. And that was my forte in New Jersey. We were there for almost three years. By the time my, na my name was getting a little bit more well-known, we moved back to Michigan. <laughs> and then in Michigan, it wasn't too bad because I already had almost one clientele from there anyways. It worked out. Facebook helped a lot with Michigan, getting my name back out again there. I would pay for the Facebook ads and promoting specials. Most of the time it was referral because my friend referred me to other friends and family. The great thing with photography with having kids is that I get to pick the time and the location. Mm -hmm. And majority of the time it's on the weekend or in the evenings. 
Mm-hmm. So that works out with having kids. And then my husband is at home with them when I do go out and, or sometimes he comes along and the kids will play in the playground mm-hmm. nearby or something close by. And then, and I, and, it, and it's cute because sometimes my kids become friends with some of the clients that I work with too. Mm-hmm. So it's a plus there. <laughs> What's great about what you do and even the entrepreneurial side of you as a mom, like a mompreneur, yeah. and you you were with other moms, which is great because we understand yeah. what that life is like having kids. But what's yeah. nice is that like you came to a couple of things, even wearing a baby and able to yeah. shoot. So you were able to do your job baby wearing. I remember the when the last time she shot our family, we were at Canterbury Village. We were doing on the yeah. carousels and your kids and your hubby were doing something else on the property. And then afterwards, we all went and had cider and donuts with your family. And it was lovely. So you blend that very professional, do a great Mm -hmm. job, but also this is who I am. And this is my family. And this is why I do all of this. One thing that I really respect about you is you're very proud of your heritage. And you are, are very much about like showing other cultures, like even with the school, And so talk a little bit about where your family is from and why that matters to you and important and integrating into kind of your day-to-day world. Originally, my ancestors are from Kashmir, which is the northern region of India and Pakistan, and I believe even Nepal and um, parts of China too. But my mom and her family are from Pakistan, and my dad's side of the family grew up in Nairobi, Kenya. About three generations there. Mm-hmm. But originally, I think my great grandfather was from India. I tell people I'm South Asian because I'm not really quite sure where exactly <laughs> they're from. So when people say, Oh, where are you from? And I was like, Well, I'm just South Asian. I'm the, or, or there's another term called Desi, which is a term that a lot of Bangladesh, for people from Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan, even Nepal, and Nepal too, they will call themselves Desi, which is a term to saying South Asian. And I was born in England, but came to the States when I was two. I came to Michigan and I was too, actually, pretty much raised in America, but I've always loved my, like, representing my culture and my heritage, which I feel like is very important. And I tried to be involved in not only in the my neighborhood community, but also our cultural community and try to do whatever I can to participate in events or just anything at school events, like anytime they have any multicultural diversity events, I'm there to be like, okay, I'm here. What do you need? It's just important to me to represent my culture and have my kids understand the cultural and heritage too. And I've always been a big promoter of diversity and culture for everything. And I feel like it's just important to to have in our society, especially with so much that's been going on in the world. And mm-hmm. funny thing is, I try to get my name out there for different diverse groups too. And I go to my husband, oh man, I need more African-American clientele or I need more Hispanic clientele. Because I'm just the type of person that wants more of a diverse Mm-hmm. Like catalog because I feel like it's important to me to have that representation and not just one group or another group. As a photographer, I feel like every family is important and that they should be represented too. And even with socioeconomic too, I try to get my name out there to help people who can't, for say, hire a professional photographer for a family. I've done a buy nothing groups where I've just say, hey, I'm giving away free family session. Mm. I try to do that every year just to get, because there's a lot of families that can't afford to get pictures taken mm-hmm. and, and I'll do that and I'll get them in and anytime they need me I'll get them in for sessions and same as senior portraits and sessions and stuff like that too I try to help a lot of kids that parents can't afford for them to get seniors pictures because they get quite costly I try to do galas school galas and school events for pro bono and help out with those and charity events anytime there's a charity event I never ask for money because I feel like mm-hmm. a nonprofit organization and they're doing whatever they can to help fundraise for an event. I'll do that for free for them. From a marketing and branding perspective, what I find so unique in what you do is it's so much a part of who you are. Like yeah. you freely share the side of your life. And some people are guarded for lots of reasons because of the society we live in, the situation, yeah. news, all kinds of things. But I feel like it's beautiful. The traditions you have with your family, you're sharing them as part of your brand. Yeah. It's very much a part of who you are. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with being authentic in that. And they don't know how to balance some of that. Like, how do I show this side of me that's very personal and me- it means a lot, but also I am professional and I, this is, informs who I am professionally as well. Mm-hmm. You do such a nice job with that from a very personal, basic, authentic place. And it resonates because it just shows what kind of person you are. And I certainly like to follow. I am not 
from that area. So I've learned a little bit about some of your traditions through your posts. Mm-hmm. I love your saris and the things that you wear. And yeah. <laughs> I've seen, I've witnessed some of the weddings you've done. It's beautiful. And I think through your sharing, you're also educating and you're teaching and people are able to, I don't know if I'll ever be invited to a South. Very interesting from a branding perspective of who you are, Safina, as a photographer mm-hmm. and a person. Tell me about in during your all the business that you've done and kind of things that have happened in this 15 years of career now you've had, what have been some of the biggest or most unexpected plot twists? Moving is always a challenge. When we moved up to Austin, we came in the summer of 2019 before COVID. Was trying to get my name out and then bam, COVID happened. So that wasn't helpful. <laughs> but the luckily with being out in Austin, the weather's a lot nicer than Michigan. So I was able to take pictures outside and put the mask on, be a little bit further away. And of course, I have a Zoom lunch, so you can still capture all those intimate moments, mm-hmm. but just be a little bit further away. I had a lot of clients actually during COVID since it was outside. So my business still thrived. I've been a lot of others, photographers and other businesses hindered during COVID. A lot of those clients then after having experience with me, they would hire me again every year for their sessions and refer me to friends and family too. So- what is it about your industry that really frustrates you and how do you think you combat that what frustrates me the most is when people reach out and they're like how much and is that and we don't really need up to an hour or we only need like 15 minutes you can't get anything in 15 <laughs> especially, especially if it's kids like and since i'm a teacher i know how kids are and i know when one minute they'll be totally fine the next minute they could be throwing a tantrum or they could fall down and there could be dirt on them or, or like a boo or Whatever it is, you have to be prepared for that moment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes 15 minutes just for a kid to warm up to you. (laughs) So when they asked me to lower the price, they want a smaller session. And I was like, no, my session is up to an hour, which means I will give you at least up to that hour. If we get done before, that's great. But that's just how my session is. And I don't charge that much to begin with. I I like being more of the affordable photographer Mm -hmm. and someone that anyone could hire me. Instead of being one of those high-end photographers, I give all my clients all the images. I edit all the images so they get everything. That's a lot different than most other photographers. What is one aspect of your business strategy or decision-making process that has evolved the most over the last 15 years and why? The camera, the technology has definitely changed. When I first started photography with film camera, so it costs costs more because you're taking Mm -hmm. pictures of film and you have to be very careful on what you're taking pictures of. Also, the the cost of film and then getting it printed was a lot more too. Now I feel like with the technology, there's so many different companies that you could print from, uh, Shutterfly and uh, Kodak and all. It's just more affordable for people. So I feel like that's a plus. I went from film to 35 millimeter to now mirrorless camera. It's just a I'd like a complete change in technology. Like if you're in low lighting and like a wedding venue, you don't have to worry so much about having certain flashes popping here and there. The cost of cameras go up too, right? The lenses cost more than the camera itself. Like that is another thing that it is, when you look at the cameras, you're like, holy moly, like they're so expensive. And then also software and AI also is another thing that's been a big game changer too with editing and software. Every year it changes. But when it comes to family, even weddings, like I'm sure there's, there even, who knows, robots in the future. But imagine. <laughs> but I do know that AI has been a big takeover in a lot of industries and it will also in, in photography too, because I've seen it myself where people have taken their own picture, put it through AI and with these softwares, and it looks like they had gotten a professional photo shoot done mm-hmm. when they did not. And it puts them in a whole outfit and a backdrop already, mm-hmm. everything set, their makeup, all of that. So it's just like, oh my gosh, people are going to not need studio portrait sessions anymore if they're going to be using AI. Oh, I don't know that. I, I put in a couple of pictures through an AI to get LinkedIn, like to see what it's doing. I'm always yeah. trying to test the new technology, especially from a marketing perspective and photography, yeah. graphic design all sits in that space. And it, there was maybe out of the like, 30 or 40, there were maybe three that actually looked like me that I could pass as me. Some of them are a little, I know. we're going to live in a society where we're going to meet people and not even recognize them anymore. And not even recognize them. And that's the scary part too with Photoshop too. There comes a point where 
I don't like to use Photoshop as much. I'll do blemishes. I'll do little marks. I can do that. But when they come to say, oh, can you make me look skinnier? Or can you make my face look like this? Or can you? I'm like, dude, it's not. It just won't look good. Like I there's a certain point where I will edit Mm -hmm. and then that's it. I won't go any further than just like pimples or shiny parts or or just like scratches on the face. Yeah, I'll do all that. But when it comes to extreme photo editing, I will not do that. I just it it just I just feel like that's just not me. (laughs) That's not my style. You can't more of the natural. You can sit in your own space which is yeah. more of just portraits, more natural. Yeah. And I've seen the ones where like, like, like the, the, the back, like, like and... it's a ballerina and there's like smoke and like light yes. and like, yes. lightning no, I'm, and all the that's things. Not me. And then, oh, if they ask for a studio, I, I have friends that have studios and I'm like, okay, I do have friends. Or if you want studio shots, JCPenney has studios. Uh-huh. You want something just simple like that, go ahead and do that. And I do have backdrops. I have portable backdrops and I could come to the house and do those type of shots too if anyone prefers that. I try to accommodate my clients, but if it's something that's over the top and I can't, I usually refer them to somebody else or, or say, I'm so sorry, I, I can't do that. And even when maternity sessions, I have I had people ask if I had maternity outfits and stuff like that. And I was like, no, I'm sorry. I don't have those type of outfits, but <laughs> it's like you could buy them and I could take the pictures. But yeah, so it just depends on what someone's looking for. There's always everyone has their own type of style and things that they want. And, and if it doesn't work out, it's not a big deal. Let's talk a little bit about the personality of your business. Can you share a customer yeah. story or a testimonial that perfectly captures the essence of Safina's photography? I think the, the, the best is when I had families in Michigan reach out to me and then they took their pictures and this is the best we could do without you, Safina. Or, or I would, there would be things that I would do for kids like who are autistic or just kids that get the, their attention. Like I would put leaves in my mouth or flowers in my mouth or I put a, a branch in between my nose and make it look like a mustache or just silly stuff like that. Anything I could do to make a kid laugh or smile, I would do it. And so when the mom, let, over the, not too long ago, actually, sent me a picture and she's, her son had put a twig in his mouth and saying, send this to Miss Safina. Seeing stuff like that just warms my heart because I know that they still remember me, even mm-hmm. though I'm not there anymore as their photographer and that they miss the way that I took their pictures. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of, I think that was like my favorite is when parents reach out to us and they still remember like the way that you would do things and the way you would get them to smile, laugh. And they're like, we have not found a photographer that we've like ever since you look. <laughs> True. Maybe I should go back just a little bit ever so often. I did it one year. I had like eight people reach out to me and two weddings that I did during that time. And then two senior sessions. And, it, and I was only out there for, I think, a week. Mm. And people reached out and they're like, screen out, we're getting you in, we're getting senior session or whatever. And I was like, okay, I'll see if I could do it. Some people, when they do see me coming back out there, they do request me to come back and take their pictures. So I had a mom reach out to me a year in advance for her other kids' senior picture. So share a fun oh, fact about your business that even maybe your most dedicated customers might, might not know about you. Like something quirky or behind the scenes that makes your brand a little unique. I'll get whatever it takes to make a kid laugh or smile. And sometimes I do it, I get the, the parents laughing more than that I do the kids. And then another thing I do is I'll say to the boy, if there's a boy, the girls, I'll say, instead of saying cheese, I'll say poopy. And, and they laugh for that. I'll do whatever it takes to get a kid to laugh or smile or get a family more comfortable to feel them more ease. I, I think that's maybe one of my quirkiness. I'll run. Like whatever, I've had to run back and forth to tickle a baby and come back or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. It'll be my workout, but I'll do it. I'm just really picky and very intricate when it comes to my photography too. So when I do go through the editing process, if if there's a picture that I really like, I think I'll do every effect for that picture because I'm just like, okay, maybe they'll like black and white. Maybe they'll like sepia. Maybe they'll like the old antique look. I'll put more work and effort into that when I really don't need to be doing that. And that's why by the time I'm done, I'm like, I have maybe 600 or more pictures that the, the families can pick and choose from because I give them so many different options. And, and I'll do close-ups and I'll do different editing, you know, things. If, if there's a really cute picture and a sibling was in it, but they were blinking or just wasn't that great, but th- that picture was great. Like, I'll try to take that person out and make it look like the backdrop and behind them. So there's a lot of stuff that I do that's extra 
that I don't really need to be doing, but I do it anyways, just to make my clients happy and myself be happy with what my you know outcome is with the session. You made me think of um, one of the pictures of Zeke when you said that. Yeah. I think it was for his baptism and our wedding. You took a picture of his heart on his ankle. Yeah. You put it in like sepia and black and white and a couple of different options and gave it to us. And we ended up when, for my listeners who don't know, perfectly shaped heart. He still has one on his back. Yeah. The, the one on his ankle has faded considerably. He keeps growing. So the skin keeps stretching and it's not oh. as much anymore. But, but she took a picture of his little foot and he was about nine months old at the time. And so, yeah. when we were going to court for his adoption, I don't even think I've ever told you the story, Safina. Yeah. We had to share photos of our family and we went to court several times for him for lots mm -hmm. of reasons. But when he, we were, they were terminating parental rights and putting in the petition for adoption, the judge brought us in and asked us some questions. And we were shocked because before we got up there, she was like really mean. There was a situation where she was like, you better get your head together. And we were like, oh crap, she's going to be so yeah. mean, right? Like we were bracing ourselves for the worst. Yeah. She asked for the pictures of our family life and we had given yeah. her a few different things. A couple I'm sure you had taken, but that one, she said, is this his foot? And I said, yeah. And she said, is that a freckle? And I said, yeah. And she said, it's like a perfect heart. I said, I know it's perfect. And I said, he has one on his back too. And she's like, it's so beautiful. Full. She melted, but she had asked me while she was looking at the photos, she'd asked me very specifically, what is your relationship to Zeke? And I said, he is my son. And like, again, he wasn't mine yet. So yeah. from the legal perspective, but he was two days old when they put him in my arms. And from that moment, yeah, he was mine. I, I said, he's my son. And I got really choked up. Like I, it, it took me, I, I'm even thinking about it. It makes me a little bit misty eyed, yeah. she -eyed over here. But it was such a, like, when you ask about the relationship, with this, like, how do you explain a relationship? to your child when yeah. it's your child. Like there's no, yeah. I said, yes, you can keep it. And she said, because it represents, I don't want to cry. It represents how much heart you have to do what you do. Yeah, yeah. And fast forward like six, seven months later, I was at an adoption conference. Mm -hmm. She was there, she remembered me. She came no. up to me. They see how many families coming in oh, and, yeah. and whatever. Oh, yeah. All the and time. She said, I have the picture of your son's foot framed in my office and on my wall. Oh, oh wow. Bro, I forgot to tell I didn't know I came and I didn't tell you the story, but that picture, because in what we do, like foster care and, yeah. and adoption, those babies are not born from our bellies, they're born from our heart. Yeah. And yeah, that exactly. is a very powerful image of oh, like, yeah. All of that, right? And so, right. so anyway, your right. picture is on a North Carolina judge's wall and yeah. helps remind her of why we do what we do and all the things with adoption. Yeah. I don't think you realize like the everlasting impact that trickles off of the, that photography in some oh, way, yeah. shape, or form. You don't, oh, I yeah. didn't even yeah. tell you the story and we're friends. The whole journey was pretty private. Like it's a lot to go yeah. through a lot of that stuff. And until the adoption was final and all the things, we didn't share a lot of the mm -hmm. details and all of that. But yeah, that picture, I took that picture, that same picture to a tattoo artist and I had a tattoo put on my ankle in the same the exact spot. Oh, it's like a freckle to be, because again, he was born in my heart and that yeah. even though we don't match blood and DNA, our hearts match. So that picture has echoes. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's a really cool thing as a photographer. They do. They and it, yeah. and it makes a difference. There was a family in Michigan that would reach out to me for every, any everything event. And it would be prom pictures or her grandkids' prom pictures or her kids' homecoming pictures or family pictures. And her one son passed away a couple of years ago. And I think my family session was the last pictures that they had mm. took of him. And yeah. she, they used it as his picture for when they had the funeral service. Even if it's someone older, or younger, whatever. Can I take a picture of you by yourself? Mm -hmm. I know like you don't want it, but for me, it's important because you just never know what can happen. Yeah. So I always say if it's a grandma or it's a grandpa, I'm like, hey, can I get a picture of you? And then they're like, sure. Okay, no problem. But a lot of the, the family members kind of look at me and they're like, oh, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, no, I prefer this. Yes. Because of me, stuff like that, because you just don't know what can happen. And I rather have a picture of that person taken than not. Oh, that's you such know. an interesting, you don't think about that. And I know like even yeah. my grandmother and I know your grandmother yeah. recently passed away as well. We would go yeah. to Christmas and stuff and I always wanted to get pictures of her. Yeah. 
and yeah. videos because I wanted that to have because I didn't know when the last time was going to be for her. Exactly. You just don't so, you just don't know. Yeah. And because so, we lived away, I felt like yeah. so much time had passed in between visits. It would be six months or it would be I didn't I just wanted to capture it because I just never wanted to have the regret of not having some of those yeah. moments. So I think that's beautiful on so many levels, Safina. Yeah. You just don't know anyone's situation either. Like they might have been out taking pictures for so many years because of financial issue or if someone might have passed away or you just don't know what's going on with that family that you're taking pictures for. So you just want to get everything that you can take at that moment and, and capture certain like yeah. special moments between the kids or the, and the family or the grandparents or whoever it is there or any like a weddings or events like you want to try to get those moments that that they'll remember it and then when they'll be they're like oh i didn't know you even captured that i didn't even know that you even took that picture thank you for doing that when i get that feedback like that i feel like it makes me want that would that level makes me want to keep doing what i'm doing and yeah. keep wanting to be a photographer as long as i can i'll keep doing pro bono stuff and helping out with different organizations and the schools and mm -hmm. helping out families that don't have the needs to get those pictures taken our next thing that we do is a lightning round and it okay. Seven questions. Seven. Okay, so how have you created and maintained lasting connections on your journey as a photographer? Reaching out to them through Facebook or social media, trying to remember wedding dates or certain birth dates or certain events. Mm -hmm. And if it's a birthday or whatever, sometimes I like um, the picture that I took of them. I sometimes upload. I guess that's one way to do it. <laughs> I like that. If Safina's photography had a voice, what word or emotion would resonate from its core? Happiness. Mm. Dive into the library of your business wisdom, all the things that you've learned over the last 15 years, the mistakes, mm. the successes, <laughs> all the things. Which book, podcast, or entrepreneur has been the most inspiring for you? There's it used to be Oprah back in the day when she used to be on like that was something that I love watching her and her talk shows and her stuff. But, but yeah, I don't know. And Ellen, but that's the type yeah, well, of one. No. To me, as a teenager, that was like, I got a letter from Oprah. <laughs> so what tool or app has become your secret weapon for how you do your work in any way, shape or form? I just got a new laptop and that's like a new game changer for me too. So I'm um, just working with that. I When I first started out with film photography, I used, I had a Minolta camera. And then Sony bought out Minolta. So I originally just kept along with Sony because they kept the Minolta lenses and everything. I've been a Sony fan and been stuck with Sony since, since then. How do you feed your entrepreneurial spirit? I guess just getting my name out there. You're trying to like, there's like mom groups and lady, mo woman business groups that are out here. I'll tried to take part in those. If they need me as a photographer, I was like, hey, I could take your picture. I could take pictures for this event. Let me know. Anyone that's opening a new business or a new company and they're friends with me, I'll come to their opening and take pictures for them too. Any Anytime anyone needs me as a friend or someone that's a neighbor, I'm out there to help them out. I, if if it's, as, it's just as me, as helping them out as a friend or just me as a photographer, I'm there for them. Uh, the school, I'm there like all the time taking pictures for all the events. If it's a school play, even if my kids are not in the play, I'm still taking pictures. <laughs> oh, man. Any anything that's school related, kids related, anything in our just in the neighborhood, the city wise, I'm there to help out. How do you stay grounded and maintain a sense of purpose? Knowing that these pictures can make a difference for a family, and also knowing that this is going to be history. It's a part of history. That's what we have nowadays: is pictures mm -hmm. and videos, and that's what makes. Everything you remember, everything is like looking at a picture. Like, I remember it, knowing that I'm doing that for that person that it makes me want to keep doing what I'm doing. If Safina's photography prowled the animal kingdom, which creature would it embody and why? I would say an elephant. Ooh, why an elephant? Because they say that an elephant remembers everything. Ooh. Yeah, the like, camera remembers it all. Everyone, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love so, that. An elephant. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think elephants are the type a lot of people don't. I, I just always had a thing because I know that they're very family oriented too and they stay in herds mm -hmm. and they're always there for each other. Yeah, an elephant. 
First time anybody said elephant, and I think it's so appropriate, Safina. Um, okay. The next segment we talk about is more about looking back and then looking forward. So the looking back part is if you can go back to the Safina who is still teaching or just out of college and give yeah. her a piece of advice or wisdom that you wished you had received earlier in your career or listened to, what would it be yeah. and how would it have saved you time or headaches along the way? I would say whatever you want to do in life, go for it, push for it. Doesn't matter what your family thinks, what your friends think, if, even if it's yeah, like money and you say, oh, I don't think I could afford this or I think I could do this. Keep at it. I remember when I first saw the photography, I was just like, I can't afford a camera. So it's so expensive. But then I paid off my first real camera off with the, for one of the first gigs that I did. And then when that had happened, I was like, hey, I could do this. I could do this. If I keep getting these in and I keep getting my word out, there's always a way to go above and beyond. There's always a way to get to the next step. So I, I think that's one thing I, I, I feel like if I kind of said that to myself, keep going at it. Don't worry what people say. And even when it came to teaching and tutoring, I feel like I, every time I strived for something and I did it, it went well. And it was because I, I had that. I kept thinking, like, if I could do this, I could go on to the next step. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if I had that in, in the, the very first, like when I was in university or when I would just graduate from high school or whatever it was, I, if I had that, that it was instilled in me, I think that would have helped me out a, a lot more. And who knows what I would have been today. There are a lot of people who are on the, who listen to the podcast who have a business yeah. or are starting a business. Mm -hmm. What would you give as far as advice or a tangible strategy that they could use today to help their business in some way? It could be related to photography or just in general yeah. entrepreneurship. I think communicating, communication skills is huge. Being open-minded, going out there, representing yourself is a, a huge thing, especially for me, going out there and saying, hey, you're new, welcome to the neighborhood or coming up to them just saying, just talking to some somebody and just introducing yourself and, mm -hmm. and just getting to know that person will help you definitely succeed in whatever you do. Asking questions is always a great thing. It's, there's never a dumb question. Always ask the question. If, even if you think that, oh, I don't think I should ask, ask it because you just never know. Like they, they can come up with the great answer and reply back to you. Being involved in the neighborhood, being involved in the, in your, in the school district you are. If you're a mom, get involved in the PTO. Just things like that, I feel like. Like even with new businesses, we're friends with business, like just promoting it online for your friends and then they'll promote you. So if you work together, it helps. Just helping each other out, it, 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 it always it's always a good thing to do that because you just never know who that person knows. It, there's always a, a good connection somewhere. <laughs> You're right. Like you never know where it may just, lead. Yeah. Safina, where yeah. can people um, learn more about your business and what you're up to? Yeah. Facebook at Safina's Photography on Facebook or Safina's Photography on Instagram. Those are the two that I'm not really on TikTok, but Instagram and Facebook is probably the two that I'm more used more often. And and then I have Safina Mamu, which is my private one on Facebook too. So yeah. Thank you so much, Safina. So no I appreciate you taking the time today to be on the show, to catch up with me, to talk photography. I miss yeah. you. I wish I could schedule you for a session. I know. No. Well, you never know. Maybe we can pull you guys out to Austin. We can do that. Maybe. You just never know. <laughs> Your insights have illuminated our listeners' path. And to our listeners, I hope you have found this episode as fun and as enlightening as I did. Remember, you can implement any of these insights shared today into your business. And don't hesitate yeah. to reach out to myself or to Safina directly if you have any questions or want any assistance related to what we talked about today. Stay tuned for more inspiring conversations and actionable tips to ignite your business and your marketing journey on future episodes of the Sparking Ignite Your Marketing podcast. And until next time, keep sparking and igniting.